Well, good morning. Uh, we're going to get started here. Uh, we're going to sing the first verse of uh, 297. I love to tell the story as our call to worship. Uh, if uh, you are able to, I ask that you just stand uh, and uh, sing along with us. First verse of 297. turn to the back of your hymnals now to number 716 or the Apostles Creed and uh, if you uh, can agree uh, with uh, what is written uh, here uh, as the essentials uh, of our faith then please join me uh, as we profess that sorry I believe in God the Father Father Almighty Almighty, maker maker of heaven and and earth And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into Hades. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our next hymn is number 371. First, second, and last. First, second, and last. Jesus, we do come to you today and we recognize and certainly are the benefactors of the amazing love that you have bestowed upon us through uh, your sacrificial life and death on the cross, taking upon us, taking upon yourself the judgment that we deserve. Father, as we turn our lives over to you, as we submit and surrender our wills to you, we do pray uh, that Uh, your ways would become our ways, Uh, that our will would be aligned with your will, that uh, all the things, all the ways in which you intend to accomplish uh, the intricacies of your salvation plan uh, in this day and time for this people, 
uh, that you might use us and that we might be those strong, courageous, uh, bold, uh, and faithful vessels that you have crafted us to be uh, through your Holy Spirit, through the various experiences that you have given to us, uh, and through the, the way in which you continue to work in this world uh, and work through us. Father, we ask now that that same Holy Spirit would be with us as we go through the rest of this worship service, glorifying, honoring, and praising you. For you alone are worthy. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. Do I have my thing on? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I'm pretty sure I turned it on. Uh, Miss Barbara, do you see some? Is it? Uh, is my tablet doing something there? It's okay. It's on. Good. Yes, it's on. Thank you, though. We want, it's one of those things, I, I mean, I remember back during the pandemic, um, I, I believe there was a, uh, there was a, um, a service or two uh, that we had where uh, I forgot to turn it on, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I went back there at the end of the service to turn it off, and it was already off, right? So after everybody left, you know what I did? I re-preached the sermon again <laughs> with nobody here so that I'd have a recording of it. So... Anyhow, I appreciate you checking on that for me, Miss Carolyn. Uh, uh, sometimes I do forget that. Um, if you take a look at your bulletin there, we have um, uh, uh, the, uh, some, some uh, announcements here. So first of all, um, we've, uh, uh, I'll, I'll just be honest with you. Um, I believe that uh, our church uh, in particular uh, and the church uh, universal is under attack. Uh, for uh, our for various reasons in particular uh, for our standing true uh, standing firm on the truth of God and I say that uh, uh, one to to remind you uh, that whenever we go ahead and take a stand for God uh, the enemy is going to come at us with everything he's got uh, and so uh, I do believe that uh, one of the reasons why we're seeing uh, not only illnesses and other things uh, that are keeping people from church uh, is because of the, uh, the firm stand that uh, we are taking and certainly the firm stand that I'm taking in the pulpit. Uh, and I, I hope that uh, you are finding commonality and common ground with um, uh, those things that um, I've been preaching to you. But I also do want to warn you um, that uh, the enemy is out and about uh, and he is certainly um, wanting uh, all of us to bow down uh, to give in and to give up. So, uh, we will not have choir practice again tonight. Uh, Laura, her car uh, is uh, inoperable at the moment and she's spending the day with uh, uh, Jeanette. Uh, Mark uh, continues to have various health issues along with Mary. Uh, Tommy and Alma uh, are, uh, Tommy's recovering from COVID. Uh, Alma's kind of like right in the middle of it right now. Uh, Olivia continues to, uh, to be on vacation right now. So. Uh, the bottom line is uh, we don't have a full complement uh, of the choir uh, to go ahead and lead us here uh, in, uh, in worship. And so we won't have a choir practice again tonight. Uh, we, we are uh, still having the Wednesday morning Bible study. Uh, we are uh, very close uh, to, uh, to finishing up. Uh, Paul's in a great big storm right now uh, in uh, chapter 27. Uh, they're getting blown about uh, and they're basically going to get blown apart. Uh, here very shortly in this uh, this boat that they're in, this ship that they're in. Uh, but God is going to see them through uh, that storm, uh, and he's going to get Paul to Rome where he's going to stand before Caesar uh, and give his testimony there. So uh, we urge you, if you uh, have the time, uh, to join us on Wednesday mornings at 10 o'clock uh, for the completion of this study as well as uh, the following studies that we'll be doing after that. Uh, it is the first uh, Sunday of the month. It's hard to believe it's already September. Um, I won't get into what I usually get into in terms of what follows from there. You are all adults. You know what follows from there. But uh, uh, 2023 very soon will be in the books uh, and we'll be looking at 2024. So as the first thing of the month that uh, we will be celebrating communion here a little bit later on and then also as a reminder uh, we will be having our uh, church fellowship meal uh, next Sunday uh, following the service uh, with the session meeting uh, after that. Um, if you look there on uh, in your bulletin there uh, you also see those that have birthdays uh, this week. 
Jackson, uh, his birthday is today. Uh, I'm sure uh, they're having a good time with that uh, down there at Fort Moore. Um, actually, they'll, they'll probably take a, a moment or two just to go ahead and recognize that. But other than that, um, uh, probably not a whole lot of love going on down there as far as uh, celebrating his birthday. But uh, he is doing better. At least that's what I saw uh, on the, uh, the chat groups there, uh, that he's feeling better. And uh, so uh, thank you for your prayers there for him as well as for uh, all the rest of uh, uh, the men and women who are uh, serving uh, and or in training right now. Uh, you also see uh, that Katie Baker, uh, her birthday is today. And then uh, Viola's birthday is later this week here on the 8th. Uh, and so uh, she is a faithful watcher uh, of uh, uh, these uh, um, uh, services online. Uh, we have about, um, there, there's a, somewhere usually between 25 and 30 people each week uh, are watching this online. Uh, and so um, uh, we're going to go ahead and sing happy birthday to Jackson and to Viola uh, and to Katie here. And uh, I don't know if Jackson will get a chance to hear it or see it, but uh, Viola definitely will. So please join me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right. Um, feel free if you want to go ahead and uh, text that to uh, to Jackson at some point later uh, later tomorrow uh, once this is uploaded to YouTube as well. So, uh, are there any other announcements that we should be bring into the attention of the congregation at this time? Let's continue our worship, diverting uh, again all of our attention to the one who is worthy of not only our worship, our attention, uh, our gifts, uh, our resources, our activities, our thoughts, our hearts, our souls, uh, the one who is worthy, and that is Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Our next hymn is number 274. Uh, which verses, Miss Carolyn? We'll, we'll try all four. I'll try all four. 274, all four. Well, I might make it to the last.
Well, perhaps in keeping with our Sunday School lesson this morning uh, and uh, the call for us to be obedient, our responsive reading today uh, is obedience. Uh, number 631 there in the back of your hymnal. Uh, you'll find it there on the right-hand page, left-hand column near the bottom. And uh, as I'm sure all of you are well aware, I will read these passages, sentences that are not in bold. And, if you could please respond in unison to those that are in bold. Obedience. Therefore, thou shalt love the Lord thy God and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. For this commandment which I command thee this day, it is not hidden from thee, neither is it far off. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, Who shall go over the sea for us, and bring it unto us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart, that thou mayest do it. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make the way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Though he were a son, yet learned his obedience by the things which he suffered. By faith. Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out, not knowing whither he went. And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. Amen. Uh, I would remind you that we continue to leave the offering plate in the back there. Um, I'm pretty sure that Sadira sent off the offerings and the uh, the money that the church had gone ahead and sent off to Samaritan's Purse uh, in light of the uh, uh, help and assistance there for those uh, affected in Hawaii. Uh, certainly if you want to continue or if you want to give, uh, you can still go ahead and do so. Put uh, just something, a mem uh, something on the memo line there about that. Um, I'm, I, I don't know. Uh, the, the session will meet next week and there's a a possibility, certainly, uh, that uh, we will uh, ask for or uh, make available uh, an offering towards those in Florida now as a result of uh, the hurricane going through there as well. Uh, and certainly, if you just wanted to, to give and, and felt um, uh, the unction by the Lord to go ahead and give towards that already, you can certainly do the same uh, for that. Uh, we, uh, we tend to um, uh, lean heavily towards Samaritan's Purse. Uh, and that organization, they seem to do a really good job uh, of being good stewards of the funds. Uh, they have uh, good resources. They are uh, faithful uh, to not only showing the love of Christ uh, in all of these areas that they go, but also uh, to present the love of Christ through the gospel, uh, that those people might come to know the Lord as their Savior as well. So. Um, I just uh, mentioned that, uh, that, 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 that that may be an opportunity here in the future as well. Um, we are going to skip the uh, choir special for today. Hopefully, maybe next week, we can finally do Rock of Ages. Uh, and so with that, uh, if you'll take a look on the inside uh, of your bulletin there, again, on the right-hand side uh, towards the bottom, uh, we have those that we've been praying for. Let me just give you a couple of updates. Um, uh, I, I talked with Aussie. Uh, Aussie's got a grandson uh, who is now engaged, uh, and uh, that grandson, there are some engagement activities down in Tuscaloosa today, so she and Polly uh, were heading down there. Uh, Tommy and Alma uh, are uh, still in the midst of COVID. Tommy's doing better. Uh, Alma has, has 
pretty much uh, is kind of like in the middle of it right now. She had a kind of a rough day yesterday. Uh, she's doing a little bit better today. Uh, Lindan just kind of re-aggravated her back yesterday from working around the house and out in the yard there. Um, Mark uh, had a colonoscopy on uh, Friday. Uh, he had headache and fever yesterday. Uh, Mary continues to be uh, sick with unknown uh, uh, illnesses at this point. Uh, so uh, that's why they aren't here. Um, I also went ahead and uh, talked with Mary Baba. Uh, Stacy uh, is back at work. Uh, in addition to the, uh, her passing out and the, the, the seizure-like moment that she had, um, uh, subsequent to that, she also ended up, ended up with COVID. Uh, and then after that, she had a, an abscess uh, 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 in her mouth from one of her teeth and had to have some work done there as well. Uh, and so she has recovered from all that. She has a uh, cardiologist appointment coming up here. Uh, on uh, the 6th, let's see, three, four, five, six, which I guess sounds like Wednesday. Uh, and it's just a follow-up. Uh, they just want to make sure that there's nothing else going on that they aren't already aware of there. Um, Mary is going to be going back to Arkansas on the 2nd, um, so about four weeks or so from now. Uh, and all the things that she was going to have done um, about five or six weeks ago, uh, they're still planning on doing w uh, when she goes out there. She continues to feel pretty much okay. Uh, a little, a little loss of energy, um, um, uh, some weakness in her knees from time to time. Uh, and I, uh, I'd left my hymnal open there just for a second, and I've closed it. But as I was talking to her, she's uh, mentioned that she is rereading the Bible again, uh, and uh, she mentioned that uh, as she's been reading it, uh, she's now got her highlighter out. <laughs> And she's highlighting certain passages, uh, things that she hasn't seen uh, in uh, the uh, previous times that she has read through the Bible. And it just reminded me that, you know, as we go through life uh, and certainly as we grow in our maturity uh, as Christians, uh, God is faithful even in his word uh, to, to, to illuminate and to reveal things there that have always been there uh, but may not have been uh, as important or uh, as forthright to us. Uh, because of uh, either where we were at the time uh, or where we are at the time now. So uh, she uh, is thankful for our prayers, uh, misses us, uh, and uh, like I said, she'll be go heading back out there, uh, assuming everything stays uh, as it is right now. She'll be heading back out there uh, in October. Uh, she's a little concerned um, just from the standpoint that she has not been on any medication now for four months. Uh, and so, again, the hope is uh, that as they do the various tests and the various scans, including the, the bone marrow scan, uh, that it's going to show improvement uh, from the, uh, the, the, the cancer that was there before. Uh, and so, um, uh, please continue to pray for her. Um, Jeanette is uh, about the same. Uh, she's, uh, she's still getting up uh, from time to time um, and uh, has a, a little bit of physical activity. Uh, she's drinking uh, a little bit, uh, but she's not eating very much at all. Uh, so um, please continue to be in prayer for her uh, and for the family. Um, I haven't heard of anybody down in Florida, Delene and Conrad, um, they're good uh, there. Um, uh, Karen's uh, daughter in Jacksonville uh, is also well uh, and so uh, my mom and my sister were much further west uh, at Eglin and so they didn't get hardly anything there at all so praising God for that but I know that there's a lot of destruction a lot of people who are displaced right now so we certainly want to keep them in our prayers uh, as well uh, are there others uh, that we either can bring to the attention of the Lord at this time or updates Yes, Preston. Cooper's with us this weekend. Okay. He's not having a good day. That's okay. where he is. All right. We will he needs our, and the Lord's help. Absolutely. Absolutely. He's made a lot of progress. Made a lot of progress. Uh, I, he's having yeah. a bad day. I understand. I have bad days, too. Um, usually it's a good thing if you don't see your pastor having a bad day. <laughs> Anyhow, um, what else do we have to share? Lots of unspoken requests. Okay. Um, 
Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer then, and uh, let's lift up um, uh, these that we've uh, talked about here as well as those that are on your hearts right now. Lord Jesus, we, we do come to you um, in faith, uh, but also in humility, uh, recognizing that uh, you hold within your palm as well as just within your word uh, all power uh, to create uh, and to bring forth life, uh, to change things uh, in various ways, uh, to transform uh, and to bring judgment. Uh, Lord, we, we thank you for uh, the love that you have not only uh, expressed to us in word, but also in deed through the cross uh, and through uh, the Father's resurrection uh, that you have overcome and defeated our greatest enemy uh, not only physical death, but more importantly, spiritual death once and for all. Uh, Lord, uh, these bodies that we still inhabit now are not the bodies that will last throughout all eternity, uh, and they continue to suffer from the consequences of sin uh, brought about through the fall. Uh, Father, we ask that as we uh, are, are attempting uh, to be as good a steward as we can with these bodies, uh, that even uh, in our uh, best of efforts, that there are things that come upon us uh, or things that occur that are totally beyond our control. Father, for those who are suffering from COVID and or other viruses or bacteria at this point, especially uh, Mark and Mary and uh, Tommy and Alma and um, uh, there's others that I'm are just uh, eluding me at the moment, Father, that uh, you would be with them bringing healing uh, to their bodies in particular, but Father, for all those that are being impacted, uh, that uh, you would bring healing to them, Father, that uh, they would be doing what they can in order to cooperate with the way in which you are operating, but Father, that uh, uh, you have the power uh, and the ability to go ahead and bring that healing through various means. Father, we do thank you for those health professionals uh, that are uh, constantly uh, and faithful uh, to bring care and support to us, uh, either in our homes, uh, like Stacy does at times, uh, or in the hospital, uh, those chaplains as well that uh, serve not only the patients, but also the doctors, the nurses, the staff, uh, all that are there, Father. Uh, that you would be with them, helping them to, uh, to stay safe as well. Um, uh, healthy people typically don't go to the hospital except to visit and or to work. Uh, and Lord, uh, as they go into the hospital, they are susceptible to uh, those same germs and viruses and bacteria that are there as well. We do, we do urge and uh, request uh, that you would continue to provide for them, protect them as well. Uh, Lord, for those that have been displaced by the hurricane and uh, have uh, lost um, personal property, uh, other things, mementos that can never be replaced, we uh, ask that you would be with them. Father, uh, uh, guide us uh, as uh, you will uh, with regard to how we should help uh, our brothers and sisters that have been affected, uh, certainly there as well as there in Hawaii. Uh, Father, we continue to lift up uh, all of our leaders uh, at the local level all the way up to uh, the national level. Uh, Lord, that uh, you would uh, be with them, that you would not only uh, bring them uh, health uh, and protection, but also wisdom, uh, guiding them uh, to be uh, open to and uh, strong and courageous with regard to following uh, the will that you have them to follow. Uh, Father, we, we do uh, ask that you would strengthen our faith uh, in our obedience to you as well, uh, that we might not question um, uh, your requests of us or your commandments of us, uh, that we would trust in your Holy Spirit to be able to guide us and to provide for us uh, as you ask us and command us to, to, to be obedient 
uh, to recognize your will in our lives as well as in the lives of others, uh, that you might continue to use us for your glory, for your honor, uh, for you to be praised, uh, that uh, uh, when they look to us that they would see you uh, and you alone. Uh, Father, help to continue to transform us uh, into the image of your Son, uh, that you might be glorified. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, if you will, uh, open your Bibles to the book of Romans. Uh, today we'll be on the last road or last step of the Roman road of salvation. We'll be in chapter 5, looking at verse 1. Uh, I would remind you that uh, I initially read from the King James Version and then uh, later on most of my references, unless I note otherwise, will always typically be from the ESV. Uh, again, this is the fifth and final step on the Roman Road of Salvation. Again, like I said last week, if you go search on Google, you may find uh, uh, some uh, uh, pages out there that would have four steps. You may find others that have uh, different verses uh, or um, uh, ancillary verses that go along with the verses that I have uh, been preaching on as well. Uh, but I think that you will find that all of these verses uh, and all those pages out there are, are going to follow a similar theme. Uh, this is uh, Romans chapter 1, I'm sorry, chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Father God, we just pray now, right now that the life that you bring to us through your Lord, through his life, through his death, through his resurrection, through the word that you have preserved and provided for us, that that word would bring life, that your Holy Spirit would illuminate it in our lives right now, uh, that you would use us uh, in your glorious plan of salvation, that you would be glorified, honored, and praised. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. As I look out in the congregation today, <clears throat> I see faithful followers of Christ, faithful and strong in their faith. And while there's no way for me to know all of the struggles that uh, any of you have been through in your life, nor uh, all the ways in which you have been blessed, I'm certain uh, of the fact that all of you have had Christian role models that have influenced you that have had a great impact on not only your life, but also on your faith. I feel equally certain that each of you here today have had the privilege of knowing personally a Christian believer who faced not only their life, but death, not with fear, not with frustration, not with anger, not with bitterness, not with anxiety, but instead with great peace. It may have been your mother or your father, your grandmother, your grandfather, an aunt or an uncle, a sister or a brother, or even a close and dear friend. Who it was is not nearly as important, although the person is important, but who it was is not nearly as important as what they showed you. Not only how to live the Christian life, but how to die and finish the race full of faith full of hope and full of peace. Dying in peace, dying in peace is probably something that most people, both believers and non-believers, hope will be their final moments, perhaps even just dying in peace while they and or we are fast asleep. However, dying at peace is something that is altogether different. From Luke's account of Stephen's horrific death in the book of Acts, I would conclude personally that Stephen died at peace. And while we don't have any biblical references specifically to either Peter or Paul's deaths, I would likely conclude that at Peter's crucifixion, as well as at Paul's beheading, that they too died at peace. Personally, I have known two extraordinary Christian women who died at peace although they didn't necessarily die in peace. Sadly, both of them ended up dying from rather similar circumstances. Highly aggressive brain cancer that was discovered late in its progress. The first woman was named Fredis Smith. She was married to Clarence Smith, 
who most people know as either C.L. or Smitty. I came to know C.L. through bowling. His wife, Fredis, would sometimes come to the bowling alley with him, and that's how I became to know her as well. C.L. is a deacon at First Baptist Church at Alabaster, where he and Fredis were members. Fredis helped establish a ministry there at the church called Joyful Stitchers Ministry. They specialize in knitting or stitching items for people who are, ironically, fighting cancer. Blankets to keep them warm in the hospital when they are undergoing cancer treatments. Hats to wear on their heads when their hair falls out. And bags to put on their walkers to carry things that they need but can't hold on to. Fredis became a person that helped me personally to complete many of my out-of-class seminary assignments in between frames at the bowling alley, allowing me to either discuss certain things with her from my classes or in being able to recite verses that we were required to memorize. Fredis died on September 27, 2016, just a few months before I became an ordained minister. The second woman was named Hazel Cristalier. She was married to Reverend Dwight Cristalier, a retired minister in the United Methodist Church. He and Hazel lived in Hueytown. Now I came to know Hazel through one of my former computer clients, Kitty Barrow. Hazel was her personal assistant. Kitty is a Christian woman also incredibly gifted and with an enormous amount of energy and drive. It was Hazel's responsibility, which was not an easy one, <laughs> to keep Kitty's business and personal life on track by maintaining her calendar, making travel arrangements, interacting with Kitty's clients, and anything else that Kitty needed Hazel to do. All of this work by Hazel entailed a great deal of computer work on her part, and when things either didn't work or she couldn't figure out how to do something, she would call me. And then as I was there working on the computers, Hazel and I would have in-depth conversations about life, about church, and then about my seminary classes as I, was heard, as I heard the call into ministry. As a retired pastor's wife, Hazel was someone who had worked as an, uh, Hazel had also worked as an office manager for the United Methodist Pastoral Care and Counseling Department. And as a result, she had a great deal of experience both with church ministry and ministers and was a great source of encouragement even for me. Hazel died on June 19th of 2018. As I mentioned earlier, both of these women died of highly aggressive brain cancer that was discovered late in its progression. For Fredis, it was just about 30 days. 30 days from the time she was diagnosed until Jesus called her home. She was 78 at the time, just two weeks shy from turning 79, and just three weeks from celebrating her 50th wedding anniversary with CL, which the family did go ahead and celebrate even in her absence. But as awful as all that might sound, I must share with you that from the moment that Fredis learned of her diagnosis, after which she and CL agreed that she would forego any chemo or radiation treatment, which would have only potentially extended her life by a few months. She was not angry, she was not bitter, she was not anxious, and she was not afraid. Even before she started to show any symptoms of the cancer, she told me point blank at the bowling alley, I know where I'm going, and I'm at peace with it. Hazel's final days were a little longer than Fredis's, not much more, but she too decided against any chemo or radiation treatment that would have only extended her life in months, not years. She worked for Kitty as long as she could, and when she no longer had the energy, she then spent her final days at home with her husband. Hazel kept her diagnosis private, not sharing it with Kitty or me for some time. However, when she did reveal her situation, like Fredis, she was not angry, she was not bitter, was not anxious, and she was not afraid. In supreme faith, she also said she knew exactly where she was going and that she was at peace with it. After a short battle at home under the care of her loving husband, Jesus called Hazel home at the age of 61. I've shared my experiences with these two remarkable women because they demonstrated not only their unfailing faith in God, 
in Jesus and in eternal salvation that's only available through the work that he did on the cross at Calvary, but also because of the profound effect that it had on them in this life in how they saw themselves, how they saw God, and the peace they carried with them right up until the very end, including the very means that God allowed to come over them as he called them home. During their lives, these two women, they heard, they believed and accepted the charges that God had against them, that they were sinners, enemies of God, with no way of reconciling themselves or to make amends for what they had done to him. These two women heard, believed, and accepted that the consequences of sin, the wages that are paid out for what sinners have earned, is not just physical death, but a spiritual death filled with eternal torment and anguish. These two women heard, believed, and accepted that through God's grace and by his amazing love, he took steps that only he could take, that through the perfect life, sacrificial death, and judgment for sins that Jesus took upon himself, in our place, that God made a way for sinners to be forgiven and reconciled to him in a way that was just, a way that was permanent, completely free, and available to all, no matter what their prior sins have been. These two women heard, believed, and accepted the free gift of salvation that God presented before them, receiving it with faith, treasuring it within their hearts, and professing their belief with their lips that Jesus Christ was the Savior that they needed and the Lord that they then served and trusted. And as a result of those four steps, these two women knew and experienced the truth embodied in the fifth stop of the Roman road of salvation, as Paul writes in chapter 5, verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, to fully understand that verse, we need to first understand what it means to be justified. Last week in our Sunday school lesson, Brother Rick in, in, from Luke chapter 18 went over some of the questions at the end of the lesson, which included this one. What does it mean that a person is justified? Perhaps there are some here today or who will watch later who have that same question. Before I give the answer, let me highlight just, uh, just briefly how important this question is by just reading a few pertinent verses to you. First of all, at the end of chapter 4, right here in the book of Romans, right before verse 1 of chapter 5, Paul, in describing Moses' account of Abraham from Genesis, writes this. No unbelief made him waver, speaking of Abraham, no unbelief made him waver concerning the promises of God, but he grew strong in his faith as he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. That is why his faith was counted to him as righteousness. But the words that was counted to him were not written for his sake alone, but for ours also. It will be counted to us who believe in him who raised from the dead Jesus our Lord, who was delivered up for our trespasses and raised for our justification. That last sentence implies that somehow when we are justified, that like Abraham's faith was counted to him as righteousness, so too will our faith be, be counted to us as righteousness. Similar so much that Paul even wrote something to that effect in Verse 5 here in chapter 4, when he says, And to the one who does not work, speaking about the law, the one who does not work but believes in him who justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Now, last week on our fourth stop on the Roman road of salvation, justification was an important topic in those verses, as Paul wrote in chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Verse 10, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. Again, from that last sentence, we see that how sincere belief of God raising Jesus from the dead and all that is understood in relation to Christ's death and resurrection, that that brings about justification to that person that is then publicly confessed through the mouth 
as a declaration of their salvation. Lastly, to give us an appreciation of how important and significant it would be to be declared justified, listen to what Paul writes in chapter 8, verse 33 here in Romans. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Let me read that one more time. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. In other words, once you have been justified by God, no one, no person, no heavenly angel, no wicked demon, not even Satan himself, can rightfully or truthfully bring about even a single charge against one of God's elect, not one that would be valid. That, my dear friends, that, my dear friends, is truly saying something special and spectacular. So, what does it mean to be justified? To answer that, let me just read to you the same words that I read last week at the end of the Sunday School lesson from words that were written by a man named Keith Eggert in the, teacher, in the teacher's Sunday School commentary. This is what he writes. Being justified before God means being declared righteous and therefore innocent of all charges against us. So, there's the definition of biblical doctrine of justification being declared righteous and therefore innocent of all charges against us. However, there are great dependencies as well as implications to being justified. As Edgar goes on to say, this, this justification, being declared righteous and innocent of, of, of all charges, this can never happen to someone who does not acknowledge that there are charges. Hence, yes, Romans 3.23. He goes on then to say, we must accept the fact that we are sinners in need of a Savior if we are to be born again. When we recognize our sinfulness and humble ourselves before God in sincere repentance, the redemptive payment of Jesus' blood is immediately applied to our sin. Hence, Romans 5, 8, along with an implicit understanding embedded in there of Romans 10, 9 through 10. And he finishes by saying, and we are received into the family of God as forgiven sinners. Being a member of God's family implies that we are no longer God's enemy. And we are in fact at peace with God, hence Romans 5, 1. And being at peace with God and ha having been declared justified and righteous means that we have nothing to fear, nothing in this life, and nothing in the life to come. Now, speaking of peace, I'm reminded, and you may have been reminded as well, that we talk about peace at least once a year. Once a year at Christmas, with peace being one of the Advent candles. But even as we see in our scripture verse for today, we know that peace is much more than just a ceasefire or an absence of hostility. Paul specifically tells us in his letter to the Galatians that peace is one of the nine parts of the fruit of the Spirit, the fruit that is manifested by God through the Holy Spirit in the true believer's life. Therefore, each of us as believers are not only at peace with God, but we also have the peace of God in our lives, working within us, helping us to deal with adversity from various attacks of the enemy against us personally or those that we know and love, as well as from the consequences of all sin in this fallen world. Not through anything that we might do, not through anything that we have earned, but as a result of placing Jesus as the Lord of our lives and submitting to the Holy Spirit, thereby giving him control and authority over our lives. He then is willing and able to bring peace where anxiety, alarm, doubt, and even fear would ordinarily reign. And peace is a great thing indeed to have in our lives and with that we have come to the end of the romans road of salvation five stops in the book of romans where the bible clearly teaches one why we need salvation two the consequences of not having salvation three how god provided salvation four how we can receive salvation and five what the results of salvation are in our life in closing, 
I hope, I hope indeed, that you have experienced the supreme privilege, the supreme privilege of knowing a Fredis or a Hazel in your life, a faithful Christian brother or sister that not only lived in peace, but died at peace, who knew that when they took their last breath here in this life, that an incredible, glorious, and spectacular life with God awaited them in the next life. I hope that as born-again believers at peace with God through Christ, who alone is solely responsible not only for us getting saved, but also in keeping us saved, that others may look upon our lives and draw strength and confidence through our faith and our peace, that they may be drawn to our Savior and to our Lord. And so today, as encouragement that we all need, I leave you with these words from the Apostle Paul that he wrote to the Philippians, even as he was in prison. This is Philippians 4, verses 4 through 7, which I know you've heard before. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And from Jesus himself, who told his disciples right before he was heading to be arrested and later crucified for our sins. John 16, verse 33. I have said these things to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart. I have overcome the world. May the peace of Christ be with each one of you today, tomorrow, and every day, right up to the point that he calls us home. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we, we come to you and we are humbled by the extraordinary demonstration of love that you have shown and, and acted, showing not only the love that you have for us, in maybe an emotional or relational sense, but in an e e effective manner that has done something that nothing else could ever do, no one else could ever do. No act, no work, no, nothing that we could ever say, nothing that we could ever do, nothing that we could ever think. Nothing. Nothing. Can do what you've done for us. The charges that you have levied against us in your word are true and demand judgment. And Lord, we are grateful and humbled that you would take that judgment on yourself. And all that it entails that we might be declared righteous and innocent of all charges that you through that the father through your blood declares us justified and as a result of that justification that we are at peace with you right now and for the rest of our lives and for all eternity. It is nearly incomprehensible to fully 
understand and to fully appreciate the significance of what you have done. May it always be in our hearts. May it always be new. May it always be effective. May it always have an impact on us. May it see us through the best of days and more importantly, the worst of days. May you use us to bring about your plan, your glory, your honor, that you would be praised and that you would be truly worshiped in the manner in which you deserve. Father, help us, help us through whatever days that you have in mind for us, whatever events or experiences that we will go through, that as we have you walking alongside us, that we will be faithful, that we will be strong and courageous. Lord, that we will be at peace knowing who you are, whose we are, and that you will never, ever let go of us. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. As the first Sunday of the month, we regularly, as long as we don't forget, celebrate communion and observe it. Uh, you should have a communion element somewhat close to you there. Uh, you can at this time go ahead and take that uh, first wrapper off and get to the red wafer and, and uh, the tricky part, getting the aluminum foil off and trying not to spill it.
that will be shed for you and for all men that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Take your breath. Let us start. Lord Jesus, in, you, in faith, in obedience, we remember. We remember not only what you said, we remember what you did. We remember that you gave your whole self for us. Your body, your blood, it was voluntary. It was a sacrifice. It was a perfect sacrifice. You are indeed the Lamb of God, prepared for us, given up for us, that our sins may be forgiven and that we may be reconciled to you forever and ever. You commanded us that we should do this until you come again. And along those lines, we have followed that today. Father, we ask that as we do this, as we remember that which you have done for us, uh, that you would strengthen our faith, that you would nourish us, that you would encourage us, uh, assure us uh, of the confidence that we have in you uh, and all that you have done as we go through this life, giving you all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Uh, for you deserve it. You are the only one that is We ask that you would continue to forgive us for our sins that we have committed, uh, Lord, as we repent of those sins, uh, and, and Lord, that you would use us to continue to reach all those that are still need to be saved. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. A closing hymn, you see there. I'll see you in just a second. Appears to be. Number 430, I Must Tell Jesus.